We are back in the basement and at it again. So today we're looking at venting and initially I was going to do a little bit of design work before I started filming, but the first thing I, I think I need to determine is not just how I'm going to vent, which I know I'm going to come out of these two two inch PVC pipes, go back to the wall there somehow, kind of come back over here. Originally I was thinking maybe popping them through that uh, mess, this messed up casement window, which is kind of half wood or whatever it is, half wood, half glass. But now I'm thinking uh, a little bit differently. Do you see this, this two inch uh, galvanized uh, or EMT? That is my main electrical. And that's coming from the, uh, the electrical box. And notice how it is going through that jo that end joist right there. And then we're going to go outside and look and see where that's oriented. But I'm thinking maybe instead of going out this, this uh, casement window here, I would go right above it and about a, maybe 10 inches away from that electrical pipe, but up into that, into the, that sill right there. Well, let's go look at it from the outside. But before we do that, I wanted to show you what came with this ream. Again, this is the Richmond or ream. Uh, this this is Richmond is Menards or it would be ream for Home Depot. And I think it's called Performance Series. Same thing. Um, it did come with a cool little thing there because I was trying to figure out like how would I terminate the uh, terminate the pipes outside. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can just pop them, you know, from the outside and have them kind of curl up and around on the outside. Um, but this makes it nice and tight and um, to where they're not very noticeable because this kind of is the front. It's the side of my house that's not noticeable, but it is kind of the front of the side, so you could probably see it from the street. The way this thing works is you put it up against the side of the house. Your pipes will come out approximately 8 inches apart or whatever. Now oh, let's see what... Sorry, I'm going to... So uh, actually six inches on center, something like that. Uh, what The way this works is this attaches to the side of your house. So it'll be like that. And they, you would have your fresh air pipe coming through here. So a two inch PVC coming through here. And then, um, and then your, your exhaust would end right here. And so the way this works is when you screw this cap onto it, the fresh air intake comes up to here and pulls the air in through here. But notice that the, sorry, it's hard to see. Notice that the, um, on the um, exhaust side, it terminates. Well, but what happens is, is if you look at the side profile, sorry, again, one-handed, get it ready here. That's close enough. But see, from the side profile, you can see the exhaust is just so, so simply coming off the back of it, where, and it, but it's terminated from the outside, and then the fresh air is pulling in through. Now, first I thought, eh, I don't know about that, because I've read requirements about you need the intake and exhaust need to be at least 12 inches apart. Um, yeah, the reality is this fresh air intake for this tankless water heater, yeah, it's the fresh air intake, but it doesn't necessarily have to be super fresh. You're not breathing that, that intake air. It is just being part of the combustion process that heats the water heater. So I'm, I'm thinking that that's why they're not as strict with these, these tankless water heaters. They don't necessarily need to be 12 inches apart. So I'm going to try this, but my concern is that if I put it on the outside of the house, up on that sill up there, it might be still too low uh, for the snow line. So let's go outside and, and check that out. All right, well, here's the outside where I'm gonna be mounting it. And here is the electric meter here. That's where that um, two inch conduit for the electrical came in. So if we were to go in somewhere near there, I think I can go a little higher and about 10 inches away that would put us somewhere right here, which I think would be pretty good. And I can cut away these, these um, the cedar uh, siding and, and get this nice and flat, or, or just add some wood to it, a bump out to it, and that would be like right here. So I think that would look good. Now, a few things to be aware of when you're doing this is you got a lot of stuff going on right here. We got gas, we've got electrical, uh, phone, internet, whatever. 
We've got the end of the house. We've got windows there and uh, here. Um, so as I was looking up code, I was trying to see, okay, well, what, what are the restrictions, right? They said to be about four inches, four feet on center away from your um, gas meter uh, with, you know, combustible gas exhaust, which I think we're fine being right here. We're not far away. Probably shouldn't be un right under a window, which we're fine here. The window's way up there, so we're good there. The other thing is if it was in the front of the house, I couldn't go under this window. This is a window, since this is an old house, we use air conditioning units, uh, window units. This is the primary air conditioning unit that we use for our downstairs. So it wouldn't be good to go right underneath that when, when there's an air conditioner unit in the summer. Um, the other thing is the code says, I was wondering how far from the ground would you put a vent? And they, the code says at least 12 inches. Well, um, I mean, I guess the biggest determinant there is this white stuff, right? If you're in a region that has snow, you probably want to go above 12 inches. Um, I mean, we typically don't get that much um, buildup right next to the house, so I think this should be okay. But I would like to go a little higher than 12 inches, and I think we're good there too because... Um, that's 24 and we can be there a little bit above 24 inches so um, obviously if you put it down way too low and the snow builds up and covers your uh, your intake you're in a world of trouble so getting it up a little bit higher off the ground make sh making sure that the snow uh, if you do get a major snow that the buildup doesn't uh, cover the vent but I think we're good there so I think we are going to be able to use this unit we are going to be able to put it right there a little bit higher in the meter and about 10 inches over and uh, we should be fine well as luck would have it i found a couple piece of this eight inch flat um hardy plank siding um, that i just had left over from a project so I cut a couple 14 inch pieces out i'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this area out of the house and uh, put these in i got two pieces just in case I need to stack them but I think that's the best option Ni nice and flat and uh, using exterior grade uh, planking should keep it from uh, deteriorating until I get until spring and then a couple months when I can to paint it the color of the house so let's go I'm gonna go trace this out and use my multi-tool and just cut out the cedar siding and put these, uh, nail these things in with some galvanized nails and they'll have a nice flat base and then I can start uh, drilling my pilot holes and the uh, tube hole or the uh, two inch, uh, two and a half inch holes for the tubes. Well, there we go. I got my nice exterior sided and flat flange there with those two pieces of um, hardy, hardy siding. Not quite the beautiful day today that it was before. <laughs> but uh, my next step here is to wait till the rain subsides and get all this stuff, you know, put on caulked. Um, I'll make sure I caulk all of these gaps here. And then, uh, uh, but you can see what I did. As I kind of just drove, uh, drove through there. It's like almost a foot. There's two different sills. You can see how thick that stuff is. It's like probably two inches on this side and oh gosh, a good three or four inches. I mean, it was ridiculous. Probably needed a force in her bit to do this, but I got through it. So these pipes are now all the way through so I'm gonna go on the inside and glue all that in and at the end I'll come back out here and cut these down to size caulk everything and put the the uh, the flange on and then once all that's done I can put the cover over it all right here's the inside of the sill here I got both those pipes just kind of laid in there from the outside but the idea is what I'm gonna do 
is on this outside pipe. I'm gonna go with the, with the uh, long sweep elbow and that'll come up to, yeah, if I can get this, they'll come out to the outer sill up here and then the this pipe I'll glue it on and push it all the way through and it'll basically be on the inner sill uh, inside the sill I didn't film it but I just want to show you the end result of the venting it is finished all the PVC work is finished so uh, a couple elbows obviously over to the wall and then what's hard to let me see if I can get in here you can see that it goes through the wall right there so I had to get a two inch bit to get it through the wall now and then so that runs across and picks up and then drops over to there now the only thing obviously you know your situation is going to be different and how you run the pipes but the one thing I will say is make sure and your pipes going into the wall or out of the wall here this run that I did here it's kind of hard to see but I made sure that this run here is level and if not a little bit pitched back down a little bit and that way when the pipes are coming out the side of the house here you have at least if water intrudes into the pipe like maybe you know and again my house is a little different that's kind of a dead area no one really is back there but you're you might be in the back of your house where you have a hose kids playing or whatever so water could get back inside those pipes so make sure that they're pitched a little bit up so that if water does get into there it can't run all the way back down to your into your water heater that would be bad so again i made sure everything's this is fairly a uh, fairly level run right here but this run right here is pitched slightly up this way so that any water that gets in from the pipes can't make its way back up and into the water heater so that's done and the next shot i'll i'll give you um maybe in a day or so is me oh well, actually tomorrow it's going to be warm enough for me to finish the outside sill plate uh i need it a little bit warmer to caulk it so i'll show you that next Okay, well we have a semi-warm day. It's gonna be in the mid-40s today. So nice and sunny out. So we're gonna do the finish out this vent cap on the outside of the house here. Uh, according to the instructions, that's your exhaust termination, that's your fresh air vent, which just goes through there. And then when this goes on, the exhaust, you know, obviously goes behind it, the fresh air goes through. So according to their instructions, we need to cut off a one inch, one inch protrusion on the exhaust side and a two and a quarter inch on the uh, intake side in order for this to fit properly. So let me do that real quick and I'll turn you back on. Okay, I cut them to size with my little, uh, my little uh, reciprocating saw here. So next step up, we're gonna go ahead and silicone all around, you know, where they come out of the wall and then I'm going to press this on and put this on with um, they I think they came with either some stainless steel screws or I'll, I might have some coated screws so I'll go ahead and silicone this in I'm going to silicone around this the, the flange here as well and we're going to put this in and, and screw it in on, on these these holes here and then we'll be ready for the top flange all right so the base plate is on uh, I actually just went ahead and just caulked everything in even around the plate in the spring I'll I'll, I'll paint this in to match the color of the house um, and then I went ahead and silicone around or caulked around the, the tube there and before I put this on I caulked around the front of this so it's kind of sealed in there as well so the next thing is is to put the cap on I won't show you this, but I'll probably just put a little ring of caulk in there just to make sure that it's double sealed in. And then we just simply use the, we just simply slide it on here and then use the one inch screws. All right, and that's a wrap. We are finished with the exterior vent.
Thanks for watching.